Welcome to Finance Kida channel. We will cover most asked question in any interview ratio analysis. In the competitive landscape of finance, particularly for those aspiring to excel in financial planning and analysis or finance or accounts and finance interviews, mastering ratio analysis is not just beneficial, it is essential. Today, we are diving deep into the world of financial ratios, an integral component of financial analysis that frequently surfaces during interviews for finance roles. Whether you're a fresh graduate or a seasoned professional, understanding these ratios can significantly enhance your ability to interpret financial statements and make informed decisions. Let's begin with the price to earnings ratio or PE ratio, a fundamental measure that investors use to evaluate a company's valuation. The PE ratio is calculated by dividing the current share price by the earnings per share, EPS. This ratio provides insight into how much investors are willing to pay for a dollar of earnings. In interviews, you might be asked, what does a high P.E. ratio indicate? A high P.E. ratio can suggest that a stock is overvalued or that investors are expecting high growth rates in the future. Conversely, a low P.E. ratio may imply that the stock is undervalued or that the company is experiencing difficulties. It's crucial to contextualize this ratio by comparing it with industry peers as different sectors have varying average P.E. ratios. Next, we have the Capital Asset Pricing Model, or CAPM. This model helps us understand the relationship between systematic risk and expected return, making it a vital tool for finance professionals. When preparing for an interview, you might encounter a question like, how do you calculate the expected return using CAPM? The formula is fairly straightforward. The expected return equals the risk-free rate plus the beta of the asset multiplied by the market risk premium. Here, the risk-free rate is usually represented by government bonds, while beta measures the asset's volatility in relation to the market. Understanding CAPM not only demonstrates your grasp of risk assessment, but also your ability to apply theoretical models to real-world scenarios. Moving on, let's discuss Day Sales Outstanding, or DSO. This ratio measures the average number of days it takes a company to collect payment after a sale has been made. A common interview question might be, what does a high DSO indicate about a company's collection process? A high DSO can signal potential issues with cash flow or inefficiencies in the collection process, which could lead to liquidity problems. Conversely, a low DSO indicates that a company is efficient in collecting its receivables. Interviewers often look for candidates who can not only calculate DSO, but also interpret its implications for a company's financial health. Next up is Days Inventory Outstanding, or DIO. This ratio tells us how long it takes for a company to sell its inventory. The calculation is quite simple. DIO equals the average inventory divided by the cost of goods sold, multiplied by 365. An interview question you might face is, how can a high DIO affect a company's operations? A high DIO could indicate overstocking or slow-moving inventory, which can tie up capital and increase holding costs. On the flip side, a low DIO suggests efficient inventory management, enabling the company to convert inventory into sales swiftly. Understanding the nuances of DIO can set you apart in interviews, showcasing your analytical skills. Next, we'll explore Days Payable Outstanding or DPO. This ratio measures how long a company takes to pay its suppliers. A potential interview question could be, what are the implications of a high DPO? A high DPO can indicate that a company is effectively managing its cash flow by delaying payments to suppliers, which can be a strategic move in certain circumstances. However, it's essential to strike a balance. Excessively high DPO could damage supplier relationships. Demonstrating your understanding of the trade-offs involved in managing payables will impress interviewers. Now let's touch upon gross margin, an essential profitability metric. Gross margin is calculated as gross profit divided by revenue, expressed as a percentage. In interviews, you might be asked, what does a declining gross margin suggest? A declining gross margin could indicate rising costs of goods sold or decreased pricing power, both of which can impact a company's profitability. Conversely, an increasing gross margin can signal improved efficiency or a stronger competitive position. Understanding the factors that influence gross margin will enable you to provide deeper insights during discussions. 
Following closely is operating margin, which measures the percentage of revenue that remains after covering operating expenses. The calculation is straightforward. Operating margin equals operating income divided by revenue. Interviewers may ask, what is the difference between gross margin and operating margin? While gross margin focuses solely on the cost of goods sold, operating margin accounts for all operating expenses, providing a more comprehensive view of a company's profitability. Being able to articulate these differences will showcase your financial acumen. Another critical ratio is the current ratio, which assesses a company's ability to pay its short-term liabilities with its short-term assets. The formula is current assets divided by current liabilities. A common interview question might be, what does a current ratio below one indicate? A current ratio below one suggests that a company may have liquidity issues as it does not have enough short-term assets to cover its short-term liabilities. Conversely, a current ratio significantly above one may indicate that a company is not efficiently using its assets. Balancing liquidity and efficiency is key, and discussing this balance can demonstrate your strategic thinking. We cannot overlook the quick ratio, often referred to as the acid test ratio. This ratio is a more stringent measure of liquidity as it excludes inventory from current assets. The formula is current assets inventory divided by current liabilities. An interview question you might encounter is, why is the quick ratio considered a more conservative measure of liquidity? The quick ratio provides a clearer picture of a company's ability to meet its short-term obligations without relying on the sale of inventory, which may not be easily liquidated. This understanding can prove invaluable in interviews, particularly for roles focused on risk management. Let's also discuss return on equity or ROE, which measures a corporation's profitability by revealing how much profit a company generates with the money shareholders have invested. The formula is net income divided by shareholders' equity. Interviewers may ask, what does a high ROE indicate? A high ROE suggests that a company is effectively using its equity base to generate profits. However, it's essential to consider the context, as a high ROE can also result from high financial leverage, which increases risk. Being able to analyze ROE in conjunction with other financial metrics will demonstrate your comprehensive understanding of corporate finance. Now let's shift our focus to return on assets or ROA. This ratio indicates how efficiently a company uses its assets to generate earnings. The calculation is net income divided by total assets. An interview question you might face is, what does a low ROA suggest? A low ROA could indicate inefficiencies in asset utilization, which can be a red flag for potential investors. Conversely, a high ROA signifies effective management of assets. Discussing ROA in relation to industry benchmarks can further highlight your analytical capabilities. As we continue our exploration of financial ratios, let's examine the debt-to-equity ratio, which compares a company's total liabilities to its shareholder equity. The formula is total debt divided by total equity. A common interview question could be, what does a high debt-to-equity ratio imply? A high ratio suggests that a company is heavily reliant on debt financing which can increase financial risk. However, in certain industries, a higher debt-to-equity ratio may be acceptable due to stable cash flows. Discussing the implications of this ratio in the context of industry standards will reflect your nuanced understanding of corporate finance. Next, we have the interest coverage ratio, which measures a company's ability to pay interest on its outstanding debt. The formula is earnings before interest and taxes, EBIT, divided by interest expenses. Interviewers may ask, what does a low interest coverage ratio indicate? A low ratio can suggest potential difficulties in meeting interest obligations, which could lead to financial distress. Conversely, a high ratio indicates that a company is comfortably able to cover its interest expenses. Understanding the significance of this ratio in assessing a company's financial health will be a key asset in your interview preparation. As we wrap up our discussion on financial ratios, it's essential to remember that these metrics do not exist in isolation. They are interconnected, and understanding their relationships can provide deeper insights into a company's financial health. For instance, analyzing the relationship between ROE and ROA can help you assess how effectively a company is utilizing its equity and assets. Similarly, 
examining the interplay between liquidity ratios, such as the current ratio and quick ratio, can provide a comprehensive view of a company's short-term financial stability. In preparation for your interviews, it's crucial to not only memorize these ratios and their calculations, but also to understand their implications fully. Be prepared to discuss real-world examples where these ratios have influenced investment decisions or operational strategies. Moreover, Familiarize yourself with industry benchmarks, as interviewers often look for candidates who can contextualize their answers within the broader market landscape. As you embark on your journey through the world of finance, remember that mastering financial ratios is not just about passing an interview. It's about equipping yourself with the knowledge and tools necessary to make informed decisions that drive business success. Your ability to analyze and interpret these ratios will not only enhance your career prospects, but also contribute to your growth as a finance professional. In conclusion, as you prepare for your upcoming interviews, take the time to delve into each of these ratios, understand their significance, and practice articulating your insights. The finance industry is ever-evolving, and staying ahead of the curve requires continuous learning and adaptation. Embrace this journey and let your passion for finance guide you toward success. With the right preparation and mindset, you will undoubtedly excel in your interviews and beyond. Thank you for joining us today and best of luck.